We're starting the next lecture of the program in this hall. Uh, it's called uh, this Zilla plugin, best, practice, best Practices for Authors. Um, let's thank to our lecturer for giving this talk. Hello, everybody. Um, this talk is a quite advanced talk about uh, this Zilla plugin. So just to measure about uh, the audience. Uh, how many of you are using this Zilla? Okay, not all of you, that's bad <laughs> information. And how many of you ever wrote either a plugin for this Zilla a bundle? Three, <laughs> four. <laughs> Thank you, because this is really a talk for uh, auto of plugins. So I expect that all those, those other users of Dizilla plan to one time uh, write their own plugin. Um, so uh, this is a bit of view, but I will skip it because the slot is quite short. Uh, just to say that I have. 72 commits in the Dizilla core because all the, thing, uh, all the things I will talk about, uh, this is bugs I found initially in core plugins in Dizilla and I really fixed them. Uh, so uh, the core is quite clean regarding uh, the issue I will mention there. Um, so the plan of this talk is to speak about this Zilla plugin uh, in general, because there is a different kind of plugins uh, in this Zilla. And then uh, I will uh, speak about how to profile your this Zilla build, because w the major issue that made me plug, uh, uh, plunge inside the this Zilla core was to find out how to make it faster. So I will try, I will show you how to profile your, your Dizilla build to improve the speed by fixing uh, your plugins. And then I will show you uh, more detailed uh, advice about uh, other things and performance, but uh, other improvements to your uh, plugins. So there are different kind of plugins uh, in Dizilla. Uh, the first kind is the most visible one. This is a uh, plugin that are usually stored in the on CPAN on the name space. This is a plugin. Um, they are referenced from Destiny. So when you see in your Destiny, when you write the line uh, bracket uh, name uh, bracket, it's it implies it is Dizilla plugin uh, name. Um, those plugins are called during, during a different phase of Dizilla. Uh, phase, uh, I will not have to, time to speak detaily about, uh, in details about uh, phase, but Basically, you have uh, each plugin is called to to do different things at different moments. You have plugins that run before a release, during your, to make a release, to publish a release, uh, plugin to to generate file at different times uh, for your release, or to check the files that have been generated. So I will talk about bit about later, but shortly. Uh, so this is a plugin test namespace, and Cpan is a bit is a subnet namespace of this Zilla plugin. From the this Zilla uh, point of view, those plugins are exactly the same as uh, every other plugin that you find in this namespace. But I will show you that specific best practices because those plugins are plug plugins that inject files uh, uh, they inject text test script in uh, your t or xt uh, directories 
Um, the next kind of plugin is a plugin bundle, which is a, so the syntax of in is a, uh, with a narrow base. Um, this is a group of plugins with settings that you can package as a CPAN distribution. Um, at work, I wrote uh, our uh, plugin bundle for our company. This is a good way to to have the same settings for all the, the projects of your company uh, and to have, for example, uh, I did it initially to have a single way of publishing uh, our plugin, uh, our uh, uh, modules uh, on our uh, distribution server uh, inside the company. Uh, so I have a, a, a plugin which as, uh, which runs during the re release phase. Um, and uh, this plugin publish it on the uh, SSH server. I'm sorry you won't find this on CPAN because it's internal stuff. Um, and the last kind of plugin is uh, Dizilla app command. It is less known, but it allows you to add commands when you run a command, for example, diesel uh, test, test is uh, uh, PM files in uh, this namespace. So you can add any uh, command that, as you want. So I will speak about how to measure performance of your build. Uh, as I told you, uh, what made me uh, plunge into Dizilla was to find out what it, why it was so slow. Uh, of course, it's a bit due to moves and other stuff, but the first thing is that it loads uh, many, many, many plugins, uh, many, many modules uh, to run. That's why it's powerful, but that's why it's not uh, really, really fast. Um, so here are two tools to to find to profile your build. Uh, I'm saying I'm pushing you to profile your own build because every developer uses his own combination of plugins. So you will obviously have different issues than me. So if, an, if I fix many issues on plugins in CEPAN, you will find your own issue on the plugin you use and that I may not be using. So that's a way to, to, to find the issue on your own. Uh, so my main tool is Devil Trace Shoes, uh, which allow to, to uh, uh, to to see all the plugins uh, loaded and how in which order. And the other tool is uh, Devel NYT Prof. Uh, I will stop the air because time flies. Um, so there are the commands that I usually profile uh, to uh, to find uh, bottlenecks. Um, so this is just a poll. Uh, have you ever tried to profile? To, do you have an idea of how many plugins are loaded when you run just diesel? Nope. Just give me numbers. 13. Any? 13? 30. 30. You're way, way, way out of. <laughs> More. Uh, yes, uh, not not a plugins because plugins you control them because in from your destiny. But modules, here is the answer. <laughs> uh, so the good news is that it was worse a uh, few uh, one month ago. So I sent many patch to many distributions. So it's done. If you upgrade all your mod mod modules that are in involved in uh, your build, uh, so the key 
uh, is to use a lazy loading uh, when you write plugins uh, it's important to not uh, use a just use statement uh, like that in from the code of your plugins but instead to load dynamically the the dependency you need and to call the um, well, that's it. Um, so, here are some biggest practice per, per, for each uh, kind of plugin. So, the plugin command, the important thing to remember is that all plugins are loaded every time you run this, whatever the command. So, every time you install a new plugin, uh, for example, the reason one that I'm using is uh, is uh, dumb phases. That is uh, interesting to understand how phases work in this uh, This plugin will this if you install it from Cpan, this that's one more module that will be loaded every time you run Dizil. So it's important when you write a plugin uh, command. Uh, to use uh, uh, lazy loading for uh, the dependency of the code. Uh, so the next are uh, diesel, generic Dizilla plugins. Uh, this is about the same. Uh, every time a command needs to load the list of plugins, it will the load the code of all plugins. So that's compile times that will count when you have many plugins. Uh, another best practice is to uh, when you make your uh, distribution for your plugins is to use your own plugin in your own build uh, because you will find issue early not after they are pushed to Cpan. Uh, so how to do that uh, use your own plugin in the this any of your distribution and use Bootstrap lib, uh, I will refer you to the documentation, but basically it changed at ink to use uh, to in inject the lib directory uh, in, uh, in front of every other, so you're sure to use the code in your, uh, from your project uh, to build it, to build its distribution. This one I will skip. Um, for the test plugin, uh, test plugin so generate uh, script. Uh, so it's important that the script uh, must fail uh, loudly if the prerequisite is missing. It's important to list uh, that the plugin. Uh, I will show you an example of uh, plugin. Well, no, I don't have time. Um, but one of them, here is a good example uh, of uh, this is a plugin that I fixed for all the things that are here. So uh, it's important um, to list the prereq using uh, the rule uh, prereq to implement this rule in your plugin to provide the, the list of uh, modules that are used in the script that is generated by your uh, plugin. Um, and so it's important to not uh, to, to skip, uh, to fail loudly, which means uh, in your generated script, uh, you must just use uh, the module uh, necessary uh, and not uh, go try to fail uh, softly because <coughs> that will miss the point. Um, for plugin bundle, but this is the same tip. Uh, use Bootstrap Lib, uh, use your bundle from your destiny. Another, another thing is it is convenient to use this role 
this is not a core uh, rule. Uh, this is not in the Zilla core, but uh, it is available from CPAN. It will be convenient for user of the bundle. I will refer you to the documentation. Okay. So that's about it. Uh, so just to remind you, uh, as a prof as a user of Dzilla, profile your own build and report issue you find to plugin authors. And as a plugin author, uh, the most important thing is to delay dependency loading. Uh, that's it. Do you have uh, any question? Do you want a demo? Uh, any questions? Just a second. Um. <clears throat> yes, uh, do you have any advice on how to manage uh, build templates? I'm working on a um, Debian uh, build script generator as part of a project and one of the things I found problem with is generating how to generate um, properly the actual templates for text. Uh, the template for test. I'm, I'm, not, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I understand. No worries. I, I, I may be somewhat out of date, but uh, when I was going through and creating my own um, test, bringing my own um, test is still a Debian, part of, the step, it, part of the steps of creating a Debian package is to create a .deb file, and that is raw text. And I noticed that it was using... Um, Internally, it was using um, trying to remember now. Uh, this was, yes, this was like last year, so it may have changed dramatically. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. I, <laughs> I did I, not I, understand. I, I, I we can up. talk. I, I, we, we can talk after, after, later. After, but, afterwards. Uh, yeah. we can talk afterwards. Anyone else? Well, let's take our lecture again. Right now we have a 10 minute break and we are continuing with the next talk.